Welcome, Watchers of Illusion, to my Castle of Confusion. It's the 1st of March, and I'm going to look at Super Mario Brothers on the NES, which is about time, to be honest with you, because I've already covered the other two um, quite a while back, actually, and for some reason I didn't cover this one, so I thought, what the hell, let's get it out of the way. So here we are, Super Mario Brothers 3, and widely regarded as one of the best Super Mario games of all time. And I have to say, looking at this now, it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at the nice bright colours that we've got on the screen. Um, I'm going to try and play through this entire map, by the way, just so we can get a real good playthrough and give you an idea of what it's like and give you many different aspects of the game. Hopefully, that's the plan. Now you can see already that we've got the uh, raccoon uh, ability, which is done by a, I think it's a, either a leaf or a feather enables you to fly for a brief time, or like glide or whatever, but by pushing the fire button when you're dropping down as well, you can also uh, slow down your descent, as you just saw there, which is nice. So yes, you can take a run up by holding down your, um, I think it's the B button to run, uh, and then you press A and then you'll start to hammer the A button and you'll start to climb, which is great. It's only for a limited time. You can see that in the display down at the bottom. You've got the uh, the little arrows that lead towards the P, which I believe is for power up. And then you can uh, you can see there it's filling up there as I run. So every time you hold down the run button, that will charge up. Now you need a fairly flat surface to be able to uh, con complete that uh, run up, but that's not really a problem with most of these things. But just it's great to be able to sort of slow your descent down as well. The other thing you can do with your raccoon ability is to tail whip your enemies. So you don't need to jump on their heads, you can just whip them with your tail or rhythm stick. Um, and that's a really good feature as well, I quite like that. Now we're going to get into this plant pot up here. You can see that the uh, hidden zones are still there, which is great. And the music changes when you go in here as well, which is quite nice. I think the, the characters are nice as well, the, the sort of graphics on it is really nice. The, the Mario looks, um, it looks really, really good. I'm really pleased about that. And it's a turn-based uh, again, so if you do happen to play with a friend, then they will control Luigi. And uh, once you've had your turn or you die, then they will take their pe their place and they will then continue their journey. And uh, pretty much how Super Mario 1 worked. But this is lovely. I like this game a lot. It's really nice. And th there's a, that's, that's new as well, being able to slide down the hill on your bum and knock out the enemies as you go. I think that's really, really good, actually. It's very nice. So look at the map there. We've got six stages. Uh, castle, and th I'll try and get there to uh, give you guys an idea of how this all works. Um, but there's, there's some neat little tricks as well you can do, like I'm about to do this turtle. If you watch what's going to happen, he's going to smash his way through and uh, get you through. And the hidden blocks there, giving you extra coins, are intact. Now, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see there I've got two mushroom cards. Well, if I get a third mushroom card, that basically means that I'm going to get some extra lives. Uh, I think if you get... I think mushrooms are two extra lives, fire flowers I think are three, and if you get the stars, I believe that's five extra lives that you'll get from that. Um, you'll see that when, when I come to the end of the level now, in fact. Oh, there we go. So that's going to draw a big mushroom in the sky. There we go. So I'm going to get some... There you go. Two extra lives for having three mushrooms. So you get more lives on different items. So I firmly believe that it is three for fire flower and it's five for star. Now this is cool as well. Now what happens here is you pick a box, you get your item and it stays in uh, like an inventory. So if you do die in a level and you've got say a mushroom or a fire flower, you can select that on the map screen and it will automatically power you up as you enter the next stage which is really really good I quite like this as well this is the sort of the, the screen pushes you along as it were you can't you can't dawdle or else the screen will literally push Mario to his doom so you um, you've got to stay ahead of the curve a little bit here uh, with the platforms and everything there as well but you can headbutt these blocks and there's all hidden surprises and stuff in there as well but it's just not recommended to waste too much time here. And you see there's an extra life hidden in that block. That's another thing as well. There are there are things that you can do with the raccoon thing, like you can whip the blocks now with the tail as well, which is great. And you'll find all sorts of hidden goodies in these uh, in these blocks. I think there's going to be some coin, yeah, I thought so. There's coins up there, which I'm not going to loiter around with. Uh, as you can see, these blocks disappear as you jump on them. They kind of drop out into nowhere, so you've got to be careful on timing on that. 
Again, you get these little like little warp pipes that'll take you to the end of the level, which is really nice. So we're going to see as how quickly I can get through this, and I'm hoping to clear this entire map for you. Now that the card here, I believe you've got to line up three different parts of a face and see if you can get it. I'm not. I've never been very good at this. But you see there, fire flower and oh star. Yeah, that looks great. And then we're gonna get. Oh yeah, look at that from an abomination. So yeah, if you line them up, you get extra lives and stuff like that. Here's the interim castle. You'll probably recognize this layout from Super Mario 1, which is nice sort of throwback to that. And uh, the idea is basically you're going to get to the end of the level and fight a sort of sub-boss, I would say. It's not, not an end of level boss. We'll fight him when we get to the big castle at the end of this map, which I'm hoping, like I said, to get to you and show you that beforehand so here we go now this is great because you've got to navigate this level without getting crushed by those spikes so you've got to time your jumps across the gaps get to the end and get through the door I love that as well when you when you duck Mario actually grabs hold of his hat I think that's a really nice little touch they didn't have to do that but it's kind of cool I do like that um, the animation on the game is really nice actually. I mean considering this is 8-bit, I think this is really really nice. And there we go, we just defeated the, the sort of mid-boss there. And we pick up the uh, thing and this should destroy the castle here, which is great. Um, you can see that there's sort of a mixture of busy and non-busy backgrounds. Now this is like a memory game so you've got to figure out where they are. You only have two turns so you are going to have to come back to this screen quite a lot uh, when you actually find those cards floating around the map which is quite nice. Um, so again we're going into an underground level here. Got to be careful because obviously there's a the flowers. It's nice to see classic enemies from Mario uh, making their appearances in the game. I mean, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think that's basically what they've done with this. They've they've abandoned the Super Mario 2 uh, and gone back to the classic Mario stages, which I actually prefer. I, I mean, Mario 2 was alright, but it wasn't a Mario game in the first place. Uh, I think it was called Doki Doki something or other. I, I'll have to look that up. But it was not a pure Mario game. They took another game and added Mario characters to it. But this is a pure Mario fun fest. And to be fair, I think they've actually nailed it. It's absolutely fantastic and great fun to play. Very smooth. The music's great. Sound effects are brilliant. And, you know, they, they've really got back on track with the Mario system here. Uh, the levels aren't too taxing. And I think the thing is with the the maps on Mario 3 basically you start off with easy and then you start going up in difficulty and I've just lost that extra life but never mind we don't need it I've got nine lives as it is Mario is a cat not a raccoon um, so yeah they've, they've really got back on point with Mario here and they've made the game incredibly fun and I, I'd love this I mean I, I don't know how many of you played Mario 3 back when it was originally released I did it took me ages to borrow this off a friend of mine and I was pestering him every day can I borrow Mario 3 can I borrow Mario 3 in the end we actually got it finished it in the end and it was a great game and I loved it I, I finished Mario 2 as well I think Mario Brothers 1 at some point I must have finished off as well but it's just a playable game and the replay factor is amazing so you, you would find yourself coming back and playing this game over and over again you've got Toad there who makes a real appearance from Mario 1 and also Mario 2. He was a playable character in that one, as you'll probably remember. Now the Hammer Brother that I'm about to hear, basically you've just got to knock him off the off the bricks and that's it. And then you'll get a nice goodie up here, here. And this will also get added to your inventory as well. So now we've got a Fire Flower, we've got a Leaf and we've also got a uh, Invincibility Star. So now here we are, the end of the first map. And we've uh, and the king has been transformed into a dog that apparently has fleas. So now we're going to get the magic wand and change him back into a person, which is a, this is a this is going to be a cool level. I, I really like this. So we're going to jump onto the ship. Now this is basically your end of level. Um, it's not like they've gone a bit different. Instead of it being a castle, you're now on a gunship. I think this is really really cool. Lots of things to look out for, like those cannonballs. Uh, there's going to be bullet bills. Uh, there's one, and you know generally. The first one isn't too bad, it's just basically watching your step and making sure you don't get hit by anything that's, you know, coming through. And that was very, very close there. Um, but I, I think this game's fantastic. If, you, if you're a Mario fan, you are absolutely going to lap this one up. It's absolutely 
brilliant. And the fact you've got two players as well, okay, it's not cooperative, but a Mario game being cooperative, I, oh, what was that? There was one on the Game Boy Advance uh, that was sort of co-op, but again, it was, you know, you sort of took control of both of them, but you still, it was still a single-player game. Um, so here we are. It's the old tried-tested system of bouncing on the head, and I've just lost my Super Mario ability, so now I've got to try not to get hit again, and boom, he's done. Right, so we're going to get the wand, I'm going to finish this level, and therefore the review as well. I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. It's been Super Mario 3, and this has been Rich on the Retro Revival Show for the 1st of March. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for all my future content, which uh, next review should be on Friday, and I hope you guys are going to tune in for that one. I've got to decide what I'm going to review now, so... There you go. I've got a few days to. I've got a couple of days to think about it. So anyway, that's me, guys. Uh, over and out for today. Catch you next time. Bye bye.